often times uh, we hear this conversation about lazy evaluation and uh, let's see how python uh, follows this idea of lazy evaluation in its programming paradigms first of all what is lazy evaluation as you can see it is also called as call by need which means that it's an evaluation strategy when you really want it then it will be available for you it defers all computations until a result is required so that's lazy evaluation so i know what to do i have already got initialized but when you really need then call me i will do it so that's the idea behind lazy evaluation and let's see the pros and cons of lazy evaluation a little bit later but uh, lazy evaluation is also quite opposite to the idea of eager evaluation where we uh, where the functions get executed as they are seen by the interpreter so the idea of lazy evaluation the idea of lazy evaluation is a concept that comes from lambda calculus first introduced by christopher wadsworth now where does python fit in this idea so python has a couple of broad ways of doing lazy evaluation one is through built-in functions the other is through customized functions uh, we will see in another video how we can use customized function to do lazy evaluation but here we will see what are the built-in functions that you can uh, lazy evaluate so broadly these two categories are uh, through built-in functions by these four functions range zip open and map and then by using generator based functions and decorator based functions this is broadly how python uh, brings in the idea of lazy evaluation in its programming paradigms let's open up a python console and uh, let's say that i have a x which is in the range of 10 right so if i just say x actually i don't get uh, a range i only get a uh, in fact if you want to if you want to print the type of x you will see that it's of type range range is itself a type so it doesn't evaluate anything right but if you really want to evaluate then probably you should take a list or you should use a val right and then you say that then you say that i want a So you can see that you get up to 10 values so if you want to clear the screen you can use this paradigm os.system and then uh, you can you can clear it right so here i'm using you can see that i'm using the idea of range so you can also use the uh, list to to get to the individual values right so you can also get to list even you can say i want the value of so i want the value of 2 so it gives you the 2 right so you can also say i want a list of x then it will evaluate the range right if you want then it will be evaluated but otherwise it's just a range type you get initialized but you don't evaluate until you want to do it so uh, you can see that how beautifully the range function in python uh, has a lazy uh, tinge to it you can also have the zip function uh, we can also have the uh, you can also have the zip function over here let's see how the zip function uses the idea of lazy evaluation see when you say you have a zip so maybe let me initialize it to some x value now if i just say x it's a zip object so it doesn't evaluate but if i say list of x then it does the uh, computation and gives us the result but till that point it just keeps the keeps the x it's lazy it doesn't evaluate it doesn't compute until you want it to do that so which is what we saw what is lazy evaluation so which defers all computations until a result is required until you want it it doesn't evaluate it simply gives us uh, the the variable which has got initialized with that expression so you can see that the 
idea of lazy evaluation is it just keeps the initialized variable when you want it you call it and then it gets evaluated right so the other interesting thing in lazy evaluation is the lambda expression or which uses a map function so all these are built-in function uh, let's let's try out a, a this is a lambda expression so where the variable that you take is y and then uh, you multiply so basically you have a lambda this is this is the lambda function this is the lambda function and this is the i trouble and you take an i trouble and there is a lambda function here and you map the lambda function onto each variable of the each element of the i trouble so there is a map which takes a function and an i trouble so what we what what it does is it maps this function onto each element of the i trouble let's see what we are what, what's happening over here so we can see that uh, when you want it there is an evaluation happening but till then it's simply a map object right so we will see the advantages of doing like this the other uh, interesting function is the uh, the open call into a file data.csv so so the the benefit for doing this is it doesn't load the entire file the data.csv maybe it has 10000 lines in it but it doesn't load the entire file into the memory right instead it returns a file object and that file object can be iterated over and uh, this is very useful when we are dealing with very big files right so the open call is actually following the idea of lazy evaluation now we have seen how these four functions range zip open and then the map it follows the idea of lazy evaluation so you can also uh, you can also initialize it to any other variable and then uh, use a list see i can say list of l a and then now the computation happens and then it is evaluated right so till then it is just a variable l a which is uh, denoting a lambda expression so now you have seen that how we have used four built-in functions to do the lazy evaluation but what's the big deal you might ask what's the big deal why would we want to do lazy evaluation well there is a lot that goes beneath that it's a property of pure functional programming languages which 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 is used to get back performance right you evaluate an expression only when you need it right and therefore uh, it allows for faster computation and the other thing is we saw while using the range function you can actually access an element out of order you don't have to access the element sequentially right you you can access an element out of order for example i have a, a range function right i have a range function which goes from 1 to 20 and i want to find out what is x of 3 so it is 7 so i don't have to go through in sequence in order to go to the third value so you can access components of the data structures out of order after initializing them as long as they do as there is no circular dependency with them so that's what uh, is a benefit and it's really good for if you are not using it very often then it's better to keep it lazy evaluated because anyway you're not going to use it sometimes you may not even use it so we don't know or very rarely use it in those cases lazy evaluation works out much better and uh, it's an abstraction it provides an abstraction instead of a primitive if you do early evaluation you have to depend on primitives but here we are depending on an abstraction and you can create infinite uh, data structures using this concept of lazy evaluation and does it save memory and you bet definitely it does save memory uh, as i showed you in the case of the open system call where the entire file doesn't get loaded into the memory these are the benefits of lazy evaluation now certainly there has to be a catch when is lazy evaluation not advisable or in other words are there any drawbacks of lazy evaluation definitely 
there is some amount of bookkeeping required to do lazy evaluation which means you should know whether it is evaluated or not right so you should always have to know if it is evaluated or not and you should keep a tab on these things and sometimes you might lose control because you are using lazy evaluation for example if you want to get the time of a particular timestamp for a particular event that cannot be lazily evaluated so you need the time means you need it right now and what about reading a file from a disk that cannot be lazy evaluated it's a very interesting uh, functional programming uh, concept which python uses through built-in functions as well as customized functions hope you like this video do give me a like and uh, give your comments below thanks for watching